Hello all you freedom loving people. Welcome to another episode of Front Page. I'm your host, Scott Cameron Goulet. Tucker Carlson may join President Trump in hosting a GOP forum outside the existing system. They're both sidelined by the establishment. If they join forces, they may have more influence. A previously recorded message from Tucker Carlson was broadcast on Thursday. The video was recorded at the Fox News studio. In the video, Tucker says, if I was fired, which sounds like he had the ability to see the future. The Senate held its first hearing on the House debt ceiling bill. There were two contrasting views on whether the debt should be brought under control. Although the radical circuit attorney of St. Louis was very reluctant to resign, she had to compromise in the face of strong public anger. But conservatives want her to leave the post immediately. New York State requires that no gas furnaces be installed in new construction after 2025. This sets a precedent for other Democratic states. President Trump's lawyers are working to move the Manhattan DA's case to federal court in order to avoid the far left control district. And who are the celebrities who visited Jeffrey Epstein's infamous island? Mainstream society has kept it a secret. Now a few names have finally been revealed. Meanwhile, a senior WHO scientist who had close ties to the Chinese Communist Party was fired for sexual misconduct. Okay, let's get into it. Tucker Carlson is reportedly planning on hosting an alternative GOP debate, but not the already announced GOP debate that will be hosted by Fox News. Carlson wants to host his own GOP candidate forum outside the usual confines of the Republican National Committee debate system. This is an idea that he has discussed with President Trump, who of course is the leading Republican candidate. This would give Tucker Carlson a chance to test his sway over conservative politics, and he could take a jab at his former employer. President Trump has told Tucker Carlson that he is interested. Since Fox News and Tucker Carlson parted ways on April 24th, Fox News ratings have declined sharply, while other conservative outlets have benefited. Former Fox News host Eric Bowling, who is the host of the 8 p.m. show on Newsmax, has nearly tripled his show's ratings. Brian Lieb of Newsmax said, I think Fox viewers have seen Dan Bongino and now Tucker Carlson be fired, and it has been an eye-opener for them. Fox has always been seeking to censor Donald Trump in many ways, and a large percentage of the Fox base is very supportive of Trump. Meanwhile, Newsmax does not censor Trump, and in fact, they carry all of Trump's rallies and his live events. This is the type of programming that Fox viewers seek, and this is why they are coming over in droves to Newsmax. Recently, several videos of Tucker Carlson's former private conversations offline at Fox have also been circulated. The goal of the leaker is clearly to tarnish Tucker Carlson's image, but the effect does not seem to be good. These leaks are only firing up the conservative base. Donald Trump Jr. concluded, Fox News leaking to the far-left New York Times to smear Tucker Carlson isn't just an attack on Tucker, it's an attack on all of his fans and conservatives everywhere. Sean Davis, the CEO and co-founder of The Federalist, commented, If I don't care about those things, if I reduce people to their politics, how am I any better than he is? That's the kill shot offered by The New York Times, of all places. How pathetic. Senior editor at The Federalist, John Daniel Davidson, wrote, there's more honesty and humanity and charity in that one Tucker Carlson text than the entire corporate press could produce in a lifetime, and every word of it is 100% true. Megyn Kelly said in a segment, adding, take a seat, take a deep breath, and try to understand how real people live their lives, not hyperventilating over dumb jokes on the set between two guys trying to loosen up before a segment that they both hope will be great and fun for the audience at home. So this is absurd. Fox News should stop this nonsense. Tucker Carlson sent a pre-recorded video to the Conservative Political Action Conference, CPAC, in Hungary that aired on Thursday. In his message, Tucker joked, if I ever get fired and have some time and can leave, I will be there with you. Obviously, this video was recorded before he departed from Fox News. Greetings to CPAC Hungary and to all you Americans in the audience. You are very brave. You have wound it up on one of Samantha Power's lists. The State Department is keeping track. You went to a forbidden country. I wish I was there in Budapest. If I ever get fired 
and have some time and can leave, I will be there with you. But in the meantime, Godspeed. We are thinking of you and cheering you on. On Thursday, the Senate held a hearing to review a House Republican bill to cut federal spending in exchange for raising the debt ceiling. Democrats see it as a detriment to the economy. Republicans are using billions of dollars in federal spending cuts as leverage to negotiate with the Biden administration. Democrats say legislation that passed the House last week would weaken child care, education, and other government programs. Republicans, on the other hand, say that any increase in the debt ceiling needs to be combined with measures to slow the growth of the U.S. debt. The U.S. government has spent trillions of dollars on COVID-19 relief, among other things, and the U.S. debt has risen sharply along with it. So far, the Senate has not made any moves to try to break the deadlock. Senate Republicans support the House proposal, while Democrats say that they may try to pass a clean debt ceiling increase. But that is unlikely to win the votes that are needed to pass the bill. At the hearing, Mark Zandi, the chief economist at Moody's Analytics, warned that cuts by House Republicans could cause the U.S. economy to fall into recession next year. This could potentially push the unemployment rate from its current historic low of 3.5% to 6%. But a researcher at the conservative Manhattan Institute, Rydell, warned that if spending is not restrained, it will pose a huge threat. Brian Riesling said, With respect to interest rates and soaring debt, we are sitting on a ticking time bomb. Congress should be working diligently to avert an otherwise inevitable debt crisis. Jason J. Fitcher, the vice president and chief economist at the Bipartisan Policy Center, confirmed that assessment. He said, The nation's debt is on an unsustainable trajectory and action must be taken now. Further delay will only make the problem worse and the necessary corrections more harmful to the country and to the most vulnerable in our society. The St. Louis Circuit Attorney Kimberly M. Gardner, who was accused of misconduct, tweeted her resignation on May 4th. Her resignation is effective June 1st. Gardner's resignation comes two days after Circuit Judge John Torbitsky ordered Missouri Attorney General Andrew Bailey to proceed with seven of the ten claims against her. Bailey filed a writ of quo warranto against Gardner in February. Bailey claims that Gardner's failure to take other prosecutorial action has led to the dismissal of some 12,000 criminal cases. This has caused endless frustration for victims who are hungry for justice. Arrest warrant applications delivered to Gardner's office have gone unprocessed for more than eight months. Bailey also accused Gardner of agreeing to extraordinary bond reductions and failure to seek bond revocation for suspects who are charged with violent crimes. We can tell from Gardner's actions that she is a progressive prosecutor. What's disturbing is she has won two elections, and she received backing from billionaire financier George Soros, of course. The fuse that sparked the public outrage occurred on February 18th when Tennessee teen Janae Edmondson was involved in a car accident with an alleged repeat bail violator. Sadly, both of Edmondson's legs were amputated. And after all this, Gardner had vowed to fight the attempt to remove her from office. She said on April 29th, I'm not leaving. I'm not resigning. I'm not doing nothing. You will have to remove me. But on May 4th, she finally resigned. Bailey doesn't think Gardner's resignation was quick enough. Bailey tweeted, There is absolutely no reason for the circuit attorney to remain in office until June 1st. We remain undeterred with our legal quest to forcibly remove her from office. Every day she remains puts the city of St. Louis in more danger. The New York State Legislature on May 2nd approved a new state budget which includes a ban on gas stoves, furnaces, and propane heating in favor of appliances such as heat pumps and electric stoves in most new buildings starting in 2026. This moves New York to be the first state in the country to ban natural gas stoves. Governor Kathy Hochul said in an interview that the passage of the budget caps went through a weeks-long process of closed-door talks that involved a lot of give and take and a lot of strong feelings, a lot of emotion. 
The measure prohibits the installation of fossil fueled equipment in new buildings up to seven stories by 2026 and in taller buildings by 2029. This effectively requires all buildings to have electric heating and cooking. But existing buildings are exempt from the ban. Hochul said, everybody who has a gas stove, enjoy it. Keep your gas stove. But new buildings that are going up, they can go electric. They can do heat pumps. Republican leaders in the state Senate have criticized the measure for driving up utility bills and housing costs as well as imposing big government mandates. Senate Republican leader Rob Ort criticized that the least transparent budget in recent memory failed to address the affordability crisis, does nothing to improve public safety, and imposes more big government mandates that threaten our economy. President Trump's attorney said on Thursday that President Trump will attempt to shift his New York City criminal case to a federal court in order to avoid a state court trial. If successful, it would possibly give President Trump an advantage because it would expand the possible jury pool outside of Manhattan where the voters are heavily Democratic. Trump's lawyers will likely argue that because the case involves the issue of whether events during Trump's presidential campaign triggered federal election laws, a federal judge would have to grant the request. An exclusive report from the Wall Street Journal reveals a number of high-profile wealthy executives, entertainment heads, socialites, and political figures who had interaction with Jeffrey Epstein. In particular, LinkedIn co-founder Reid Hoffman's relationship with Epstein has been reported in particular detail. Hoffman is a mega donor to Joe Biden and the Democratic Party. He admitted that he once visited Epstein's private island, which is commonly referred to as Pedophile Island. The article revealed that he visited Epstein's island and later was scheduled to stay overnight at Epstein's Upper East Side townhouse in December of 2014. Hoffman told the journal that he visited Epstein's island for an MIT fundraising trip. Hoffman spent $7 million alone on boosting pro-Biden political action committees in 2020 and on ads that were opposing President Trump, who has helped raise awareness of child trafficking and sex trafficking. Jess Staley, the former private banking boss of J.P. Morgan Chase, was found guilty on Monday of sexually abusing a woman while visiting Jeffrey Epstein's Virgin Islands home. The ruling said... He used aggressive force in his sexual assault of an anonymous victim, and he informed her that he had Epstein's permission to do what he wanted to her. The filing in New York's Southern District puts more pressure on J.P. Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon to allow claims by multiple victims to proceed. The claims say that J.P. Morgan and Deutsche Bank are legally liable for their facilitation of Jeffrey Epstein's sex crimes. Judge Rakoff wrote, the banks knowingly benefited from participating in a sex trafficking venture. In March, JP Morgan Chase sued Jess Staley and they claimed that he helped cover up Epstein's criminal activities in order to retain Jeffrey Epstein as a client. Many other prominent celebrities, politicians, scholars, and business leaders have recently been exposed for their connections to Jeffrey Epstein and for their trips to Pedophile Island. The World Health Organization said on Wednesday that it has fired Danish scientist Peter Ben Embarek for sexual misconduct. The UN agency stated that Embarek was removed from his position last year. WHO spokeswoman Maria Poole explained that his removal was the result of an investigation and corresponding disciplinary proceedings in which Embarek was found to have engaged in sexual misconduct. The cases that led to the dismissal occurred in 2015 and 2017, Poole said. The WHO was only first informed of the cases in 2018 but did not provide any additional details about the misconduct allegations. Embarek is known for his role as WHO's chief representative to China in 2021 as the head of an international delegation to investigate the origins of COVID-19. Embarek's claims about the origins of the pandemic are often quoted in the media. 
The team concluded that bats were most likely the initial hosts that eventually led to the human pandemic. And Barak has issued findings that it is highly unlikely that the virus was leaked from the Wuhan lab. And he said that there would be no further investigations into this in the future. And Barak later claimed that Chinese officials pressured the WHO investigation team to drop the hypothesis that the virus had leaked from the laboratory during his visit to Wuhan. But he also insisted that he was never pressured to change the report despite political pressure from all sides, including from outside China. On February 14, 2021, Sky News Australia revealed that at least three members of the WHO panel of experts had close ties to official Chinese agencies and therefore Sky News questioned the impartiality of the WHO investigation. These three experts include the head of the panel, Peter, Ben, and Barak. And that's a wrap for this episode. Thank you so much for your support of Front Page. Please remember that every like, comment, and share helps more people to see the truth. If you haven't already, please subscribe. And if you have already subscribed, we thank you, but please double check to make sure that you are still subscribed because some of our audience have reported that they're somehow unsubscribed without their knowledge. Okay, this is our show for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you like what you heard today, please don't forget to like this video and share it with your friends and family because everybody deserves to know the truth. Again, thank you for watching Front Page and we will see you next time.